Welcome to the second module of Digital Radiography, Data Acquisition and Processing. Upon completing this module, you will be able to describe data acquisition process in digital imaging systems, explain digital processing operations, discuss the histogram formation and analysis, explain factors that affect digital imaging quality, discuss exposure indicators and their implication in image quality, explain factors that influence or affect exposure indices, Define deviation index. Explain the role of deviation index in evaluating image quality. Explain the function of digital window level and width manipulation. Explain rescaling and lookup tables and their role during image pre-processing. Recognize the relationship between pixel bit depth and grayscale. Discuss the relationship among pixel size, field of view, and matrix size. Discuss the relationship or the, of pixel size. Discuss the function of the analog to digital converter in digital imaging systems, discuss units of measure for externally, discuss the implications of image noise, modulation function, and detective quantum efficiency. So in this module, we will topics. Data acquisition, both film screen, computed radiography data extraction, and digital radio radiography image formation and extraction. Before looking at data acquisition in digital imaging, we need to understand the difference between an analog signal and a digital signal. X-ray equipment produces an analog signal. Analog signal are signals that are continuous. In X-ray, a signal is in the formation or form of voltage fluctuations on a continuous waveform, or in other words, an electrical signal. In film screen imaging, the analog signal that is produced interacts with the intensifying screen phosphor and is converted into visible light. This light carries the attenuation pattern created from the beam passing through the patient's tissues. This light pattern interacts with the film's emulsion and becomes what we know as the latent image. The latent image becomes the manifest image through chemical or wet processing. All Digital imaging employs a computer system to produce the visible image. We will discuss this of data extraction for each digital radiography system. With computed radiography, the imaging plate or PSP is exposed, causing ionization. The ionization then frees some of the phosphorus atoms electrons. These freed electrons become trapped in the conduction band 
of the imaging plate, creating electron holes or F centers. These trapped electrons are the latent image. The PCP is scanned by the laser in the plate scanner, which liberates the trapped electrons. As the electrons return to their shells in the phosphor atoms, they release energy in the form of light. The light released is directed to a photo detector by a fiber optic bundle where it is amplified and converted to an electrical or analog system of the electrical signal are directly proportional to the intensity of the remnant beam. The electrical signal is then sent to the analog or digital converter. The ADC then performs two functions, samples the signal and converts the signal to discrete numerical values in a process called digitization or quantization. The electronic signal is converted to the discrete numerical data and sampled by the analog to digital converter at a specific predetermined rate or frequency. Sampling frequency is the frequency at which the analog signal is reproduced in numerical form. Sampling is the process of an electronic signal or voltage being measured at a chosen frequency along the waveform. The more times a signal is sampled, the more accurate the output image or the higher the spatial resolution. Digitization or quantification or quantization is the process in which the analog data received during sampling is associated or assigned a discrete numerical or analog value, which is then converted into binary digits. During quantization, each pixel is assigned a numerical value representing the attenuation of the X-ray beam. Tissues that highly attenuate the beam, for example, bone, are and will be displayed in a higher brightness on the display monitor. Tissues that demonstrate lower attenuation characteristics will be assigned a higher numerical value and will appear with less brightness or darker on the display monitor. There are three types of image receptors used during DR imaging. Digital systems can be divided into two broad categories though, indirect and direct which are based on the method used to capture the image. There are two indirect methods and one direct method. The first indirect method uses a cesium iodide phosphor coupled to a CCD by either a fiber optic bundle or optic lens as noted by Johnston and Faber. Following X-ray exposure, the energy of the remnant beam is absorbed by the phosphor, converted to light, and sent to the CCD where an electric or analog signal is created and sent to the analog to digital converter 
to be sampled and digitized. The use of the complementary metal oxide semiconductor would follow the same process. The second indirect method involves the use of either cesium iodide or gadolinium oxysulfide as a scintillator coupled to a photodetector, which is amorphous silicon, and a thin film transistor. The TFTs are arranged as a network of pixels or detector elements with each detector element containing a photodetector with a TFT. In this system, the scintillator produces light from the exposure by the X-ray photons into the remnant beam. The light is absorbed by the photodetectors and converted into an electronic signal that is collected by the detector elements and then passed on to the analog to digital converter to be digitized. The direct method does not use scintillator because there is no need for light production within this system. Amorphous selenium is used as a photoconductor and thin film transistors are also employed. Prior to exposure, an electric field is applied across the surface of the amorphous selenium layer. During the exposure, the X-ray photons are absorbed by the selenium and electric charge is created in proportion to the intensity of the X-ray exposure, according to Johnson and Faber. The electrical charge is stored in the storage capacitor of the thin film transistors. The charges are amplified and read by the TFTs, then passed on to the analog to digital converter to be digitized. At this point, all three DR systems go through the same process as CR to produce the display image. The histogram is created and analyzed. The exposure field is recognized. Histogram analysis occurs and the lookup table or LUT is applied for rescaling of the data prior to display. With DR systems, only the detector elements that were exposed contribute to the formation of the image displayed on the monitor. As explained in the previous module, the TFT is constructed into small detector elements, or DELs. Each detector element contains a photodiode that absorbs the electrons and generates an electrical charge. A silicon TFT, or field effect transistor, isolates each pixel element and reacts like a switch to send the electrical charges to the image processor. As previously stated, the digital image is formed by sampling the analog signal and digitizing the signal. Digitization assigns a numerical value to each light photon. The numerical value is in direct proportion to the intensity of the light photons. During digitization by the analog to digital converter, the signal is divided into a matrix of pixels. <laughs>
the digital image formation. A computer operates on a binary system and the language that is used and uses a two symbol alphabet, zero for off and one for on. Each binary number is called a bit, short for binary digit. Eight bits equal one byte. Computer memory is rated in terms of total bytes. For example, 10 megabyte hard disk will store 10 million bytes of information. Computerized digital images are described in terms of the number of values that are displayed per image. In this section, we will discuss the following topics which are related to image quality. Spatial resolution, pixel bit depth, modulation transfer function or MTF, digital image characteristics, and dynamic range and exposure latitude. The overall size of the matrix is termed the field of view, or FOV. In digital imaging, matrix size is determined by the size of the detector or image receptor. The size of the matrix determines the resolution. A larger matrix size results in smaller pixels, which in turn provides the best spatial resolution, making the system better able to image smaller objects. As bit depth increases, the contrast resolution increases, and the pixels are able to record a wider range of shades of gray. Spatial resolution is the ability of an imaging system to distinguish small adjacent details. It is defined by the size of the matrix and the size of the pixels in that matrix. Smaller pixels increase the visibility of smaller structures and increases spatial resolution. For example, a 14 by 17 field of view equals three line pairs per millimeter, and an eight by 10 field of view equals five line pairs per millimeter. For CR, you should use the possible smallest imaging receptor for the body part being imaged. As stated previously, computers operate on a binary language, which is a two-symbol alphabet. Therefore, bit depth is expressed as 2 to the power of n, where n represents the number of bits. Pixel bit depth determines the accuracy of digitization of the analog signal. The higher the bit depth, the more shades of gray the pixels in the matrix are capable of displaying. According to Carlton and Adler, MTF measures the accuracy of an object compared to the original object on a scale of 0 to 1. A perfect image would have a value of 1, 
higher MTF values at high spatial frequency are a key specification in digital detector design. Each pixel can display a wide range of different shades of gray from white to black. The number of shades of gray is determined by the grayscale bit depth of the pixels. And this can range from 8 to 32 bits and is determined by the analog to digital converter. Dynamic range is the range of gray shades the system can display. The higher the range, the more gray shades available for pixel display, resulting in better contrast resolution. Dynamic range is also measured by the bit capacity of each voxel. A typical digital radiography system may have a 14-bit dynamic range allowing for 16,384 shades of gray to be displayed. Film screen is about a 3-bit system which allows for about 1,000 shades of gray. Digital imaging systems have wide dynamic range. Dynamic range is the range of exposure values that an image receptor can respond to and use to acquire image data, according to Johnston and Faber. A wide dynamic range also means that digital systems have greater exposure latitude. Due to their ability to display many shades of gray, the selection of exposure factors, MAS and KVP, is not as critical in digital imaging as it is in film screen imaging. In film screen imaging, an error in selecting MAS by as little as 30% is noticeable and a 50% error usually requires a repeat image. In digital imaging, the system can tolerate as much as 60% underexposure and as much as 500% overexposure. With film screen imaging, exposure errors were easy to discern just by the evaluation of the image visually. Digital imaging leaves us without those visual cues. We now rely on the exposure indices and the deviation index to determine under and over exposure. Even with this numerical objective measure, the decision of whether or not to repeat an image can still be ambiguous. The image quality factor we are accustomed to evaluating as density, which is controlled by MAS, is now termed brightness and is a function of the lookout, lookup table and the computer monitor. Image receptor exposure is controlled and is related to the quantity of photons that are produced and that reach the image receptor. This means that MAS is still an important factor because it controls 
the quantity of x-ray image noise or quantum noise under will display quantum noise. In this next section, we will look at point, point processing, which includes the following topics. Point processing operations, histograms, lookup tables, and the histogram analysis errors. One of the advantages of digital imaging is the ability to adjust the image for display. These adjustments can be made either through automatic methods that are inherent in the programming of the system, or enhancements to the image can be accomplished after processing the image. Carlton and Adler describe point processing as operations that are performed between the receipt of the input image from the image receptor and output image that is viewed on the monitor. Point processing operations include histogram formation and analysis and application of the lookup table and are automatically performed by the computer prior to the image display. A histogram graphically represents a collection of exposure values extracted from the image receptor and digitized. A histogram is generated during the initial phase of processing image data according to Carlton and Adler. Exposure values extracted from the image receptor go through quantization. The analog to digital converter must digitize or convert the continuous stream of electrons into unique values. The histogram provides a method for counting each unique digital value. The histogram will display the value of the pixels on a horizontal or x-axis and the number of times that value occurs on the vertical or y-axis. The computer system goes through a process of identifying the exposure area and the edges of the image to determine the values of interest or VOI that are supposed to be included in the histogram. Histogram analysis is accomplished through the use of complex mathematical calculations or algorithms that allow the exposure histogram to be converted with reference histograms stored in the computer. In other words, the histogram is a graph of each unique digital value displayed by the pixels and the number of times that value occurs in the image data. The computer uses the shape of the histogram and the algorithm to locate the values of interest and determine the exposure indicator, according to Carlton and Adler. The far left on the graph represented the minimum useful signal, metal, bone, the part of the beam that was most attenuated, and the far right represents the maximum useful signal, 
the skin line, the air, and the lung tissues. Peaks and valleys represent subject contrast of the patient's tissue. The shape of each structure histogram should remain fairly consistent from patient to patient. This slide demonstrates the formation of image data into a histogram. The pixel values in the matrix are represented in the bar graph, which demonstrates the use of this information. Exposure values for each pixel are on the horizontal axis, and prevalence of those pixel values are depicted on the vertical axis of the bar graph. The third illustration would be represented in a histogram. Metal objects or contrast materials are recorded on the left followed by bone. Soft tissues are near the center and gas and air are on the right. The high spiked portion on the far right of some histograms represents background brightness values in the exposure field. This area will be the darkest image data value because it is exposed to primary radiation that does not pass through the patient. The computer creates a histogram during initial processing of the image data, then analyzes the histogram by comparing it to the stored histogram for that menu selection. The stored histograms will have values of interest, or VOIs, that determine what part of the acquired data set will be included in image display. At this point, computer software will use processing algorithms to correct the image. In CR, after the scanning of the entire PSP, the exposure field and the edges of the image are identified. All exposures outside of the exposure field are excluded from the histogram and not displayed on the monitor. Histogram analysis errors are less common in digital radiography imaging than they are in computed radiography imaging because image data in direct radiography is extracted only for the exposed detectors, while in computed radiography, the entire plate is scanned to find the VOI, or values of interest, according to Faber. An image is created after a histogram of the extracted image data is analyzed using one of two formats. A priori analysis compares the exposure data set to a signal standardized data set for a matching examination. The standardized data set is derived from experiments that used like subjects under ideal conditions. There are three types which we will look at on the coming slides. Neural, in which a predefined data set is matched with the exposure data that is extracted from the image receptor. The data is compared to two or more predefined histograms, 
on the lookup table. The predefined histograms that most closely matches the data from the exposed imaging receptor is used to display the image. The shape of the histogram will vary according to the anatomy that is included in the beam. There are three types of a priori histogram analysis. Type 1 requires two specific values. The first represents the greatest attenuator, which could be bone or metal. The minimum value in the histogram signifies bone on the left side. The other specific value represents the area away from the patient where raw radiation strikes the plate, which is outside of the skin line. Between these two values, there are values of interest. This is where the exposure index is read. In type 2, it displays its data, or VOI, from the maximum attenuator up through the maximum value of the main histogram. In this case, the skin line does not indicate the maximum value. Type 2 is used for the trunk of the body, the spine, the skull, and the pelvis. Type 3 histogram is unique because it takes into account significant attenuating objects, metal prosthetic devices, or barium. That object adds an additional section to the otherwise normally distributed histogram. Area or metal or barium must be excluded from the VOI to accurately display the image showing the maximum attenuator, such as bone, and the least attenuating object, such as gas, lung tissue, or some other structure. Here we see a neural histogram in which predefined data are matched to the exposure data extracted from the IR. The lookup table, or LUT, can be thought of as an ideal or reference histogram for every anatomical part and projection. The lookup table is a processing function that applies processing algorithms to the image data to assign the correct grayscale to the values of interest, or VOI. The appropriate body part and projection is selected from a menu by the radiographer, and the lookup table is applied to evaluate the raw data from the exposure. The image will then be displayed with the proper contrast and brightness on the display monitor. If the image histogram and selected lookup table do not have a similar shape, the computer software will not be able to align them resulting in a histogram analysis error, which produces poor image quality and errors in the exposure index. The lookup table is the primary influence factor in controlling contrast in digital imaging. Lookup tables are histograms of luminous values 
used as a reference to evaluate the image data obtained from the actual exposure and initial processing. Lookup tables assign predetermined grayscale values to the pixels in the VOI. Rescaling of the image occurs at this point with the application of the appropriate lookup table. During the application of the lookup table, the computer compares the image histogram with the selected lookup table and applies algorithms to the actual data as needed to align the image histogram with the lookup table. The image eventually displayed will be rescaled and, as previously stated, will display the appropriate brightness and contrast. A histogram analysis compares the minimum and maximum values that are present in the histogram to a standardized histogram and its pixel values for the type of exam. If the captured values do not match the standardized values, the captured values are rescaled to match them as closely as possible to achieve an acceptable image. The process of matching the captured image to a standardized set of values is called automatic rescaling. Automatic rescaling permits the consistent output of image data and image display appearance even if errors in the exposure occur. Rescaling provides an acceptable image, but because the visual cues we are accustomed to are missing with digital imaging, rescaling the image pixel values to appear appropriate and display properly can lead to overexposing a patient. In this phase, the computer compares the image histogram with the selected lookup table and applies algorithms to the actual data as needed to align the image histogram with the lookup table the image eventually displayed will be the rescaled image. If the image histogram and selected lookup table do not have a similar shape, the computer software will not be able to align them, resulting in a histogram analysis error, which produces poor quality images and errors in the exposure index. In conventional film screen imaging, MAS controls density and KVP controlled contrast. The film responded in a non-linear way. If the MAS was too high, or too low, the optical density values would either fall in the shoulder or too dark of the H and D curve or in the area of the toe or too light, making them indistinguishable from each other. With digital imaging, the response to exposure is linear and so the system is capable of displaying many more shades of gray. The lookup table is also primarily responsible for image contrast as displayed on the monitor. 
Digital imaging systems are capable of representing a great number of gray shades based on the pixel bit depth of the system. As previously discussed, this is referred to as a dynamic range. The range of gray shades that can be displayed by each pixel is far beyond what the human eye can differentiate. By compressing the dynamic range, computer storage space can be saved. The dynamic range can be compressed so that the lightest and darkest shades of gray are no longer visible on the displayed images, according to Carol. A histogram analysis error may occur and some of the causes behind these errors include, but are not limited to, the obtained data does not match the reference histogram, the computer cannot find collimated edges, a prosthetic device, or an abnormal area of increased or decreased attenuation. A histogram analysis error in digital radiography occurs when poor positioning and collimation is used, an unusual pathology is present, there are artifacts that are present, anatomy not typically present is excluded, or anatomy that should be there is excluded, and there is excessive scatter or fog. When input data obtained from an acquired image does not match the reference histograms for the body part and projection that is selected from the menu, a histogram analysis error may occur. Some of these errors are more prevalent in computed radiography imaging rather than in digital radiography imaging systems. For example, data clipping when a system does not recognize collimated borders is more of a problem in DR systems. More errors are discussed in following slides. There should be four borders of collimation around the anatomy of interest. Anything outside of these collimated borders will not be recognized and therefore eliminated. For example, in film screen imaging, it was common practice to place a lead marker outside of the collimation or on the edge of the image receptor so that they were well away from the anatomy. Scatter from the exposure would allow the marker to be seen on the processed radiograph. With digital systems, the marker must be within the identified border of the image. If it is not, the computer will not recognize it and it will not be excluded from the displayed image. There must be at least three edges to identify the exposure field or all exposure, including scatter, will be included in the histogram. This will result in a histogram analysis error, according to Johnston and Faber. When these guidelines are not followed, clinically relevant information
may not be included in the displayed images. Histogram analyses are more pre prevalent in computed radiography imaging than in digital radiography because in CR the entire plate is scanned and the histogram is generated from exposure field recognition. While in DR, only the three exposed pixels are included in the data set, according to Carroll. With CR, the volume of interest, or VOI, must be clearly defined by using the imaging receptor size where VOI will cover the entire imaging plate. Exposure indicator errors are more likely to occur with CR when less than 30% of the plate is exposed. When collimating smaller than the image receptor size, the volume of interest must be centered and ideally all four combination borders should be seen and positioned at equal distances from the edges of the cassette. In the exposure field recognition process, the computer identifies the difference between the brightness values that are outside from those that are inside the exposure field. When one of the collimation borders is missing, the computer may not distinguish the collimation border that is present as an actual border and instead include it as part of the image. The computer will consider it part of the VOI and include it in the histogram, leading to histogram error and exposure indicator error. When the value of the pixels exceeds the preset threshold, those points are interpreted as collimation. Many vendors and technologists will advise you not to place multiple images on one imaging plate, as was common practice when the imaging receptor was film screen. Multiple images can still be acquired on one IP when using computed radiography imaging. This is not possible with digital radiography. There are some precautions that should be followed to do this in computed radiography. First, let's remember that computed radiography image receptors are more sensitive to even low levels of radiation both before and after exposure. CR imaging plates should be shielded from scatter radiation at all times. The use of lead mask to shield areas of the imaging plate not being exposed is good practice. Next, remember the computer is looking for data within a defined area of the imaging plate based on the menu selection. Therefore, the body part of interest should be centered to the section of the imaging plate that will be exposed. Collimation must be equidistant from the edges of the imaging plate and the projections should be placed as far apart as possible. This avoids any overlap of anatomy or image edges.
on this slide, we see the images are separated and there is collimation evident on all borders. This slide shows an error in the orientation of the exposure fields. Notice that the collimated borders are not equidistant to the border of the imaging plate. The margins of the two images are too close. Here, we see the images are appropriately separated and equidistance from the edge of the plate. This slide shows an error in computed radiography caused by incorrect alignment of the anatomy and the edges of the imaging plate. The anatomy should be equidistant from the edges of the plate. In the lateral projection, it is easy to define the exposure field as opposed to in the oblique image. This illustration represents proper collimation and orientation of exposures for CR systems. This slide shows us an image resulting from the improper selection of the adult chest algorithm from the menu. The result is a histogram analysis error without proper density or brightness and contrast. Here we see a lumbar spine with too much collimation. An exposure index of S2005 indicates that the image was underexposed. The image displays too dark because the computer put all the tissue densities for this exam and projection into a smaller space, according to Carlton and Adler. This slide shows a histogram analysis error due to centering. The patient's abdomen is included and is seen as an unexpected density on the exam that's selected, which was an AP chest. Here, the plate reader light guide is dirty, creating lines on the image, as noted by the arrows. This slide shows an error resulting from a row of detector elements not working and creating an artifact across the upper part of the lungs. In this section, we will cover the topic of exposure indicators. Exposure indicators 
are derived from the values of interest during histogram formation. It is important to remember that these numbers represent the exposure to the receptor and do not indicate the exposure received by the patient. Exposure indices can be affected by a number of factors having nothing to do with the technical factors that were used to obtain the image. Technologists must have an understanding of how these indices are calculated and how various exposure factors affect the exposure index. The image receptor must receive enough exposure to display an image of high quality and limited noise or modeling. Noisy ind images indicate the IR has not received sufficient exposure and they must be repeated. Conversely, digital images and the receptors tolerate a great deal of overexposure that would not require repeating as would have with film screen imaging. This toleration of overexposure has led to what is known as dose creep among technologists, in which they have a steadily increased exposure factors, or MAS, to avoid repeating images for technique. This practice increases exposure for the patient and should be avoided. Exposure indicators are vendor specific. Each manufacturer of DR and CR equipment uses different systems and numerical values. The difficulty for technologists is that the visual cues they always relied upon to tell them if the technical factors were there, they have produced in suboptimal image are no longer available to them. However, the wide dynamic range of digital images and the linear response to exposure will bring most images into an acceptable range. Exposure indicators are readings that express the amount of light that is given off by the imaging plate and indicates the amount of exposure to the patient and imaging plate. Exposure indicator is read by the computer at the midpoint of the VOI or middle of the histogram data. The optimal value range for an exposure index is best defined by the level of acceptable noise in an image that allows the radiologist to accurately read the image. The radiologist determines the acceptable level of noise for their departments. So actual EL may differ from manufacturer's recommendations. With Fuji, Konica, and Philips systems, increased or high exposure to the plate leads to lower or decreased S numbers and low exposure to the imaging plate leads to higher S numbers. Doubling the exposure reduces the S value by one half.
digital image receptors respond to a wider range of x-ray exposures resulting in a wider dynamic range. The response of each system can be illustrated by comparing the D log E or H and D curve of a digital image receptor and film screen image receptor. As can be seen here, the digital image receptor response is linear and therefore a greater number of density values can be displayed as opposed to the film screen which reaches a point where shades of gray cannot be distinguished otherwise known as the dmax an exposure to the imaging plate, as it increases, the E also increases. There is a logarithm-based exposure index that is directly related to the exposure levels in the imaging plate as it receives them. As exposure increases, the LGM also increases, or logarithm of the median exposure. Logarithm of the median exposure is directly related to the exposure the plate receives. For example, doubling the exposure would increase the logarithm of medium exposure by 0.3 and cutting the exposure in half would reduce the LGM by 0.3. The exposure indicator is calculated based on the analysis of how values are distributed within the histogram. An abnormality in that distribution can result in an exposure indicator calculation error. An error in recognizing the collimation margins or exposure fields in an image receptor can lead to miscalculating the exposure indicator because everything outside the collimated borders is included in the distribution of exposure values. An expected exposure variation recorded on an image receptor such as an unexpected attenuator can change how values are distributed on the histogram. This can result in an exposure indicator and rescaling error that distorts the displayed appearance of the image. S numbers are inversely related to exposure. The higher the number means the lower the exposure. Exposure indicator is directly related to exposure. The higher the number means the higher the exposure. A change of an increase of 300 plus or minus indicates a change in the image receptor exposure by a factor of two either doubling it or cutting it in half. LGM values are directly related to exposure and expressed in a logarithm value. A change of 0.3 represents a change in exposure by a factor of 2, either doubling it or halving it. 
In this section, we will discuss the standardization of terminology. For many years, clinicians have called for the standardization of terminology and numerical representation of exposure indicators. In 2008, the International Electrotechnical Commission, or IEC, published a report entitled Medical Electrical Equipment in Exposure Index of Digital X-ray Equipment Systems, Part 1, Definitions and Requirements for General Radiography. In 2009, the American Association of Physicists in Medicine, or the AAPM, released an Exposure Indicator for Digital Radiography Report. The report expressed the need for standardization in methods and terminology, according to Carter and Veal. The AAPM report, report number 116, can be downloaded for more information. At the 2010 summit of the Image Gently Consortium, all stakeholders agreed to adopt the IEC 62494-1 standard, according to Johnston and Faber. The report standardizes the meaning of some terms that are of value to technologists. Exposure index, where the exposure at the detector is relevant to the region being examined. EI is defined by the signal to noise ratio. Exposure index will respond linearly to changes in mass when KVP is held constant. The target exposure index is the target reference exposure that is obtained from a properly exposed image receptor. Target exposure index values will vary with each anatomical area of interest. And the deviation index, or DI, it is the measure of the deviation of the exposure index from the projection specific exposure index. The deviation index value indicates to the technologist proper of or below the ideal value which is determined for that body part according to Johnston and Faber. Deviation index or DI represents the difference between desired or target IR exposure and the actual exposure. Deviation index is more helpful to the technologist in determining over or under exposure. The optimum deviation index is zero, indicating a perfect exposure. A DI value greater than zero indicates an overexposure, and a DI value below zero indicates an under formula. This table provides examples of DI implications 
<clears throat> and recommends actions, if any. The deviation index is intended to be used to determine under or overexposure according to this table. If a technologist is unsure of the acceptability of an image, particularly one that is underexposed, the radiologist should be consulted. Radiologists view an image for the purpose of making a diagnosis. Therefore, they use very high resolution monitors, unlike the workstation monitors used by technologists. An underexposed image may have unacceptable levels of noise or quantum model on a high resolution monitor. The AAPM has made recommendations on the interpretation of DI for clinical use. The DI is intended to indicate the acceptable and acceptability of the signal to noise ratio. The DI is derived from pixel values and so cannot be used as a measurement of patient exposure, even if the DI is in the target range, some techniques may still not be appropriate. For example, specific KVP for spine work. And finally, poor collimation, unusual patient body habitus, the presence of prosthetic devices, or the presence of gonadal shielding may also raise or lower the DI. As stated previously in the AAPM recommendations, there could be several problems that affect the accuracy of the DI. A prosthetic device within the region of interest, gonadal shielding within the region of interest, the system fails to recognize collimator borders, or an unexpected body part in the imaging area due to poor centering or collimation. R and DR exhibit wide dynamic range and wide latitude due to their linear response to exposure. Recent literature states that these systems are able to compensate for overexposure of 500% or more and an underexposure of 60%. It is the technology to produce high quality images that minimize patient dose. This section will address the topic of exposure factor selection. While digital imaging provides greater margin for error or exposure latitude, we must remember the principles of exposure. Digital receptors are more sensitive to scatter radiation. Therefore, KVP must be selected based on the appropriate amount needed to penetrate the body part. It is recommended that we increase KVP by 15% and decrease MAS by 
which is the 15% rule, to decrease patient dose. However, we should not go beyond this because excessively high KVP will increase scatter production and fog the image. Appropriate MAS must be selected to ensure a sufficient number of photons reach the image receptor. When insufficient MAS is used, the image will exhibit quantum noise or quantum model. This noise is enhanced on the high resolution monitors of the radiologist. The image quality factor we are accustomed to evaluating as density, which was controlled by MAS, is now termed brightness and is a function of the lookup table and the computer monitor. Image receptor exposure is controlled and is related to the quantity of photons produced and those reaching the image receptor. This means that MAS is still an important factor because it controls the quantity of X-ray photons and therefore it controls image noise or quantum noise or model. Underexposed images will display quantum noise. Usually radiographs with sufficient density are not repeated. A minimum of 30% change in MAS is required for a visible change in an image. To avoid exposing the patient to additional and unnecessary radiation dose, images are not repeated for the purpose of obtaining a small visible change in radiographic density. This change in MAS can be made in the event that an image needs to be repeated for another reason. In general, for repeat radiographs, as in the case of insufficient or excessive density, the MAS value is adjusted by a factor of at least two. Therefore, any change involves halving or doubling the MAS values, allowing for a better visualization of the anatomic area of interest. As previously stated, due to their wide dynamic range and linear response to exposure, digital systems are capable of tolerating overexposure. These images were exposed using excessive KVP. In film screen imaging, these images would have been suboptimal due to the image contrast. With high KVP, the image quality would have suffered from excessive scatter, resulting in long scale or low contrast that would be inappropriate for the knee radiographs. In digital imaging, contrast is primarily controlled by the lookup table. However, appropriate KVP should be selected for the body part to control scatter production. Here we see gross overexposure, and this is termed plate saturation. 
The next four slides will demonstrate the exposure latitude of digital receptors. They are CR images of a lateral skull. This first one is underexposed based on the exposure indicator or S number. Keep in mind as you view the following images that in the Fuji, Konica, and Philips systems, the higher the S number, the more underexposed the IR. Quantum model is evident in the image, but at first glance, it may seem as acceptable. Here again, we see underexposure, although significantly better than in the previous image. This image demonstrates proper exposure and optimal density, and the S number is in the proper range. And this image is grossly overexposed. However, it does not appear to be. It has received significantly more exposure than was necessary for this projection. In this next section, we will cover the following topics post-processing, windowing, and image brightness and contrast. There are a number of computer operations that occur to change the input values of the pixels to improve image quality. The ones listed here are performed prior to the display of the image and are for the most part automatic. These would be seen before the image is on the work station monitor. Windowing functions are automatically performed by the computer prior to image display. However, the technologist is able to adjust brightness and contrast of a displayed image. A properly exposed image will not require these adjustments by the technologist. Technologists should be cautioned that depending on the computer software, making adjustments to brightness and contrast of the image could result in constriction of the data set available for that image and limit the radiologist's ability to make window adjustments. Because digital imaging provides a wider dynamic range and the computer can adjust for exposure errors, there is more latitude with digital imaging. However, a wide dynamic range is only useful if we can take advantage of it, meaning if we can actually see it. Windowing allows us to take this advantage. We can manipulate the images to optimize the visibility of the anatomic structures. The window level or center sets the midpoint of the range of densities visible in the image. Changing the window level either increases or decreases the image brightness 
throughout the entire range of densities. When the range of densities displayed is less than the maximum, the processed image only shows a small sample of the total information that was captured and stored in the computer. Moving the window level up to a high pixel value increases the visibility of darker anatomic structures, such as air in the lungs, by increasing overall brightness on the monitor and vice versa. In digital imaging, the number of shades of gray that can be stored and displayed by the computer is called the grayscale. Contrast resolution is another term associated with digital imaging, and it is used to describe the ability of the imaging system to distinguish between small objects that attenuate the beam in a similar way. Digital images have improved contrast resolution compared to film screen. Bit depth determines the number of shades of gray available for image display. When we increase the number of shades of gray, we increase the contrast resolution. An image with increased contrast resolution also has increased visibility of the recorded detail. Once the image is processed, contrast can be adjusted to vary the visualization of the area of interest. Because the digital system can display thousands of shades of gray, but the human eye is limited in how many it can distinguish, the window width function is very helpful. Overusing the windowing functions can, however, drastically and negatively alter the data set. This can reduce the diagnostic and archival quality of the data. You have to remember that in most facilities, the quantity of the monitors or the quality of the monitors that are used by the radiologists is far superior to that of the monitors used by the technologists. An image viewed on the technologist monitor in a brightly lit viewing room will look very different on a radiologist monitor in a dark reading room or office. When the data set is drastically altered by windowing, it limits what the radiologist is able to do with the image that he or she receives. This slide shows how changing the window level affects the image quality of the anatomic details and the contrast vary accordingly. Display image brightness and contrast can be also affected by the following factors. Exposure recognition errors, also termed rescaling errors. Gross overexposure in which the image becomes grayer, known as saturation. Excessive scatter excessive fog, intra-field and off-focus radiation, grid cutoff, manually increased brightness is almost always due 
to process, not a decrease in radiation intensity. In the final section of this module, we will cover defect detective quantum efficiency. Detective quantum efficiency, or DQE, measures a receptor's ability to create an output signal that accurately represents the input signal, or X-ray beam. It is a measurement of the efficiency of an image receptor in converting the X-ray exposure it receives into a quality radiographic image. The image receptor must absorb, convert, and emit efficiently. Using this graph of IR materials, you can compare these receptors based on their ability to produce images that exhibit given levels of spatial frequency. Higher spatial frequency represents a larger number of viewable objects in an image. The is more efficient in converting the input signal and therefore the patient's exposure is reduced. The goal is to choose an image receptor with highest absorption efficiency, greatest conversion efficiency, and the highest DQE to achieve the lowest patient dose. A DQE of 1 equals 100% or no loss of information. A higher DQE represents an image receptor that is more efficient in converting the input signal and therefore lower patient exposure is needed. Thank you for choosing medical professionals as your continuing education provider. We hope you found this course interesting and valuable. Before you take the post-test, please be sure to look over the module objectives to see if you need to review any of the information presented in this module. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.